Hello everybody, uh, given that it is the season of lawn, I thought I'd continue uh, going over um, lawn Lynn Armstrong versus NBC Universal Inc. I think, um, we've, well look how big the document is, it's huge but we're um, only a little bit through and we're kind of we could be at a, well we've covered a lot already but we could be at a meaty bit here so he's basically each of the points that he had to briefly touch upon in the original part is expanding upon i believe so argument one injury to rights so we'll kind of dive straight in plaintiff states claim for injury to rights under fourth amendment that if not for the actions of nbc dateline lauren armstrong would never have become ill with depression and emotional stress disorder and for all libel and slander and defamatory accusations made all libel and slander right okay well let's try and look at as i've said as ridiculous as this sounds i try to look at this it's, you know i don't want to dismiss everything just for the sake of it let's try let's look at this logically right so he's not saying here that he didn't commit any crimes sort of what he's saying here is that if it wasn't for Dateline, he wouldn't have suffered from depression and emotional stress disorder. It's a little bit, you know, because it would be it, surely even Law wouldn't go that far as to say, if I hadn't have been arrested, uh, I, w I wouldn't have suffered emotional stress for being arrested. Well, unfortunately, that's the world we live in. That's what happens when you commit a crime. You more often than not will get arrested. But he's saying, because this is, don't forget, this is Lorna Lynn Armstrong versus NBC, not against the police. He's having a go at NBC. Uh, so he's saying that their actions, it's their actions, it's it's the show's problem, not the fact that he it, it was necessarily caught in the sting. Well, I don't know, as far as he thinks, it actually... Um, I suppose he has really, hasn't it? But anyway, let's... Right, key 1941, right within statute, requiring an action for injury to rights, not arising on contract to be brought within five years after the cural of right is much a broader term than the word person. Within, I've no idea what he's going on about here. Includes injury to any right, property, physical, ability, injury, or injury to sensibilities such as mental anguish. Right, so we're just cating state law here. Uh, stating case law. Let's, right, I'll tell you what, right, within statute required an action for injury to rights not arising on contract to be brought within five years is a much broader term than the word person within statute requiring the action for injury to the person to be brought within one year and includes injury to any purpose. Right, I've such as I've no idea what he's going. That's just bizarre. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And anybody can make any sense of that. As why is that got? What has that got to do? It's just nonsense. I don't, don't, listen, as you can probably guess, I'm no lawyer. <gasps> Bet you're all shocked. Um, that just makes very little sense whatsoever. And it's very brief as well. He's not expanded on it at all. Media ride along. Argument number two. Plaintiff states claim for media ride along. <laughs> it was bad enough. <laughs> it was bad enough that Lon Armstrong got loaded into the bogus thing. What does he mean it was bad enough? It's like it was <laughs> it's like do you know what it's like at times this? It's it's kinda like it was a it's it's like a comedy script. It's like a load of it's like the ten most genius comedy writers in history got together and decided to write this document at times. It's a bit like, you know, a thousand monkeys working at a thousand typewriters like that one uh, where Mr. Bit oh, never mind. Quoting Simpsons again. Anyway, so, plaintiff states claim for media writing along. It was bad enough that Lorne Armstrong got lured into the bogus thing that was constructed completely for the purpose of television entertainment. But, <clears throat> it's like, what does he mean it was bad enough that Lorne Armstrong got lured into the bogus sting? Well, th that doesn't make any sense, because it's a sting. It's, you, what does he mean by bogus? As in, it wasn't... <laughs> 
he's kind of like, what are you saying? He's bogus because there wasn't a real girl there. <laughs> so he's, <laughs> he's like, oh no, them, those motherfuckers, there wasn't even a real 13-year-old girl there for me to molest. So, so it's a bogus. Do you know what I mean? It's like, sting implies it's bonus. It's a sting operation that, you know, you're trying to law people that necessarily would commit it, would have already committed the crime, and you lure them to arrest them, therefore making the place a safe, uh, you know, the world a safer place. That was constructed completely for the purpose of television entertainment, but that the authorities also permitted a news reporter to ride from the Stingos to the Sheriff's Department, videotaping the Lord Armstrong all the way was more than what. Videotaping Lorne Armstrong all the way was more than appropriate. I think he means more than... Hang on a minute. Videotaping all the way was more than appropriate. The media had no governmental purpose for being in the vehicle. Other than for more... More... M-O-I... Possible footage for a television show. This case is one that was begun. It's just... It's Listen, we all make we all make grammar and spelling errors when we're writing documents, but bloody hell, Lauren. You had bloody time on your hands in prison, didn't you? Surely you could have made a better job of it. This case is one that began by NBC's Dateline for their To Catch a Predator series in order to sell sex and sens- sensationalism. <laughs> He's lecturing them on using sex inappropriately. <laughs> this is... What? Would you like to see it up close so you can get a better look at it? This is a guy who well you don't need to you don't need me to tell you what this guy said and he's he's basically he's having a go at NBC um to sell because the selling sex and sensationalism he's the one that got into this he's the one that decided to make sex an issue and start trying to do what he did to a 13 year old girl sensationalism well yeah the journalist there it's dateline isn't it of course that's what they're doing there's nothing wrong with what they're doing. It was endorsed by the authorities, both federal and state. When the actual arrest came about it... Sorry, when the actual arrest came about it... Oh, right, sorry, he should have put a comma in there. He's, he's fucking... When the actual arrest came about, it became a media circus that the authorities endorsed and encouraged contrary to established federal case law. Right, okay. In the case of Wilson versus Lane, we hold that it is a violation of the Fourth Amendment for the police to bring member of the media into a home during the execution of a warrant. Well, they didn't do that. They didn't. There was no warrant being executed, and they didn't. You know, th- there was no no th- th- no warrant. In the presence of third parties in the home, that was not in the aid of the execution of the warrant, right? So that's completely that, as far as I can see. And any anybody that stood about studied American law, please let me know. But from a common sense perspective, um, that doesn't apply because the, the, the war, a warrant wasn't being executed inside the house. And I think what what th- this is a different. I think what they're saying. What you got to remember is warrants are usually executed in people's homes. That wasn't Lawn's home, right? There was no invasion of privacy there. He went to the house to commit a crime, so his rights don't apply. He doesn't have any rights. So, on a number of way, in a number of ways, that's bullshit. Accordingly, as of Burger, what? As of Burger 1, the law in the circuit prohibiting such conduct was clearly established. Second, the district court also aired in holding the Detroit... What? Well, Detroit failed to provide sufficient evidence regarding how the media came to be in his home. Oh, right, okay. Is this in relation to this bullshit case that he's babbling on about? Wilson make Oh, yeah. Wilson makes clear that the mere presence of the media... You see... This is the thing in his home during an execution of the search warrant. It's not his home. He turned up. <laughs> he just really... It's just the, the fucking nerve of this guy. The, the like... it's Number one, it's not his home. He thought... 
it was the home of a 13-year-old girl whose parents had gone away on holiday. So he was basically planning to molest that, to do whatever with that girl in her own house, or take her away to his house and do it there. But yet now, he's quoting case law, saying that the media shouldn't have been there because it's wrong to be there in the execution of a search warrant at people's home address. What, I mean, it's almost as if that it it's almost like the the whole month of the chat log it's, it didn't happen. It's like he woke up in prison and thought, I've been screwed, and, and the, his only memory is of him sitting in that chair claiming he was innocent and then him getting arrested outside. It's like it's like the chat log never happened. Wilson makes clear that the mere presence of the meat I've already said this. Yeah, in the individual's home during a search warrant acqui- acquiesce. During a police search with police acquiesce. In in the individual's home during a police search with police acquiesce. This does not mean media acquies- acquiesce. Violates the Fourth Amendment. Right, well... <sighs> Describing Wilson's holding as prohibiting the presence of reporters during the execution, blah, blah, blah. Defendants concede that the videotape evidence Detroit submitted... Oh, sorry, his Detroit person submitted in support of his summary judgment motion demonstrates... Where did he get this information from? You know, how did he... D- <laughs> I wouldn't have thought, I mean, did he have access to the internet? I think he might have done, you know, because he does state in one of the lawsuits he's whinging, I think we've already covered it, where he's whinging about um, uh, that NBC had a link to his chat log on their website. So I don't know if he just Googled home invasion fucking media privacy or something. Third, even if his try was required to provide evidence, blah, 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 from which the jury infer that the police... In- you see, none of this applies. I mean, there's no point in me reading it, really. The video, this video clearly shows policemen actively assisting the media representatives in obtaining the story. The co- cooperation between the media crew and the police is extensive. Troy was handcuffed and in the police custody at the point. It's irrelevant. Right, okay, so here's, here's another C. Stack versus Killian. Officers in unquestioned command of a dwelling may exceed the scope of the authority implicitly granted them by the warrant when they permit unauthorised invasions of privacy by third parties who have no connection to the search warrant. There was no search. There was no search warrant. What's he going on about? Hang on. Have I got the wrong end of the stick here? Is he is he talking about like when they searched his vehicle, media ride along? So we, right? Okay, yeah, he is talking about the media being there full stop. So, <sighs> that I'm trying to see, there must be a stem of logic somewhere, but I'm I say there must be, but there doesn't seem to be. I'm trying to find the one speck of logic that Lawn found and expanded upon, but I can't even find that speck. I don't. It's like it's complete nonsense. Officers in un- unquestioned command of a dwelling may exceed the scope of the authority. In pos- oh, I've already read this, haven't I? While Detroit was submitted direct evidence, right? It's the same case. Same as the instance of the media present... Alright, okay. Same as the instance of the media being present during the search of Pistis's truck. The petitioner has the same expectation to privacy in his vehicle as to his home. Whose home? What's he talking about? They didn't go to... Well, I mean, I think... Did they search his home? I've not got any information about that. To invoke... Well, the cameras definitely weren't there because he would have fucking mentioned it. To invoke the Fourth Amendment protections, a person must show that he had a legitimate expectation of privacy. A person demonstrates a legitimate expectation of privacy when that... He's fucking lost me here. I can't even... The Ninth Circuit has held that the owner of an automobile has a legitimate 
expectation of privacy in his car. Therefore, petitioner has the same expectation of privacy in his vehicle as he would have at home. And so in the above stated law, you substitute home and vehicle. Fucking, he's fucking totally lost me there. Anyway, right, let's carry on. Right, fucking hell, it's our graph this. Plaintiff states, claim for invasion of privacy for being present during the search of Lone's truck by recording the police search in the interior. What? When suspect signed the consent to search form, it was for the police to search the truck. There was no mention of the media being present before or when suspect signed the consent search form. Consent to search form. The violation of the Fourth Amendment is present is the presence of the media. The petitioner has the same expectation to privacy in his vehicle as his to his home. All oh, right, so that before was quoting some kind of law to invoke the Fourth Amendment protection. It must okay. Right, so he's basically saying that the the, the media have no have, have no legitimate right to film the you know because there's footage in the show of when they searched we searched Mr. Armstrong's truck in there we found bracelet condoms. Do you remember they searched so you could see what they'd found. Um, his argument is they had no the media didn't have a right and it's violated his right to privacy by filming that. Well, number one, he had no rights because he's broke the law and as I understand it, there's other those rights don't apply at this point. You know, this he signed the form. I suppose he's admitting that, but what he's saying is that didn't give them the right to have the media there. The media at that point can film that. There isn't any legal reason why they can't. But what difference does it make, right? Basically, what he's saying is, how dare you film the search of my truck and find incriminating evidence and then put that on TV to expose me? Because, you know, they found the condoms and the bracelet, which adds weight to what he was doing there. He's brought her a gift and he's brought condoms, which clearly shows that he had intent for sexual contact as we all know so what he's saying is you motherfuckers um have filmed that and caught me in the act how dare you you violated my rights well number one you're refusing to acknowledge that's the reason why number two that you haven't got like to stand on legally anyway argument for unreasonable search and seizure Plaintiff states claim for unreasonable search and seizure with the media's presence during the search of suspect's vehicle. They had electronic surveillance equipment present and recording during the search of the truck. Suspect was never informed before or after signing the consent search form that media and not so electronic surveillance. What does he mean, electronic surveillance? A search to which a suspect meets Fourth Amendment requires the usefulness of electronic surveillance depends on lack of notice to the suspect. I don't know what that means. I think he's just trying to find any, any anything that they did, which, anything that went on, and it's basically anything that the media did. The whole presence, their whole existence. The Chris Hansen, the cameramen, um, the whole reason for being the 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 actual content of the show, the editing of the show. Um, the language, everything that they did is wrong according to him. Plaintiff states claim for overly intruding into law enforcement operation by persuading police to allow... Plaintiff, overly intruding into law enforcement operation by persuading police to allow... I'm assuming that's what he meant. NBC Dateline to interview suspect and for strategizing and organizing events with police. Well... I, d- I don't we've covered this before haven't we um NBC the outline to interview suspect police hang on right so M- police overly intruding into law in fo- by persuading police to allow NBC to interview Right, so according to him, they shouldn't be interviewing him and the cops shouldn't have allowed that to happen. Um, 
it's well it's the police's decision there's no reason why they can't there's no formal police interview taking place when um Lorne is being spoken to by Chris Hansen nothing legal is at play at that point because he's not been arrested there isn't any real girl there so there isn't any there's nothing legal taking place so that it's just a t- two people talking if he thinks it's a police officer it's his problem um, and for strategizing and organizing events with police well strategizing and organizing events with police for the st- well it's none of his business that it's none of his business it's irrelevant you can't you can't get caught in you can't get caught it's like getting caught doing a crime and then whinging at the police that the tactics that they use were insufficient. It's fucking none of your business. Um, the Supreme Court has recognised that the Fourth Amendment is violated if the media... Can you believe someone had to someone had to actually read all of this? Good God. The Supreme Court has recognised that the Fourth Amendment is violated if the media overly intrudes. Yeah. Alright, okay. Okay, so we might be onto something here. The Supreme Court has recognised that the Fourth Amendment is violated if the media only intrudes into law enforcement operation. In Wilson versus Lane, the same fucking case he mentioned before, media light ride along case, a Washington Post reporter and photographer accompanied law enforcement agents as they attempted to execute arrests arrest warrants in a home. Well <laughs> like I've said before, this isn't like that. They're not attempting to execute arrest warrants in someone's home. Um arrest, arrest warrants are different. The Supreme Court held that the Fourth Amendment was violated because police brought the media into a home during the execution of a warrant when the media presence was not in the aid of the execution of the warrant. Like I've said, it's totally irrelevant. Um, yeah, you can't, we can't, we can't bring that into, I'm not, there's no point in reading any of that. Plaintiff states claim for zones of privacy for cameraman woman constantly harassing suspect during the drive from the stingos to the ship. He keeps going on about this, doesn't it? Which suggests that this really, like, got to him. I think he's at his lowest point in this car, isn't he, if you think about it? And he's got this camera being shoved in his face. Stingos to the sheriff's office during the search of suspect trucks while suspect's handcuffs are unable to move in any direction to hide from the co- oh my god if only I could get hold of that footage oh my god it, but I don't think it exists anymore oh Jesus Christ can you oh I wonder how many times he said card during that at one point while suspect was bending over to hide his face from the camera the camera was almost touch his face but what the it almost the camera almost touched his face. Well, let's say it did touch his face, and but it didn't. It actually almost touched his face. Okay, under some circumstances, there can be such a gross abuse of privacy as to well, for a start, that footage never got released. So his whole argument is that they were there but didn't release the footage. So that's a little bit weird. There can be such a gross abuse of private as to abridgment of fundamental constitutional guarantees. The right to be free from publicity is protested. Blah, 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 blah. Well, it, it, it's kind of like irrelevant, this, because that footage was never heard. So what he's going on about, rights of prior rights, so he's basically what he's saying is that the, the fact that media were there and film is, filming him was breaching his privacy. The protection to a person's general right to privacy, that is, his right to be left let alone by other people, is like the protection of his property and of his very life. Hmm. I'll tell you what, it doesn't have going some crap, does it? Um. It's harassment, okay. Plaintiff states claim for harassment for NBC having link to perverted justice website, which is also harassing. <laughs> so not only is it like everybody that was involved, every single person, every single organization, right, that was involved in in what led to these arrests, have committed, have basically broke the law, and they've all wronged law. <sighs> Enabling public view. Contents of conversation between suspect and decoy. Conversation have been on the website f- 
from the time of the sting up to the present date. Um, right, I don't know whether this is true, but what he's saying is that there was a link to the Perverted Justice website on NBC's website, which, for the sole purpose of enabling public to view contents of conversation between suspect and decoy, conversation has been on the website from the t- okay from the time to the present date. A person can only handle so much ignorance and exposure and unwanted plus unneeded publicity. What the fuck is he going on about? Um, Conversation. A person can only... What? Unwanted? Well, yeah. (laughs) It is unwanted because of course he doesn't want that. Of course he doesn't want people to see the chat log but why is it ignorance w- what's ignorant about it the only thing that ig- that's ignorant was the actual conversation that started in the first place which was all down to him a person can only handle so much ignorance and exposure and unwanted plus unneeded publicity well how is that harassment i don't understand unwanted conduct from one person or, or you know numerous acts of contact from one person or group w- would be my definition of harassment <laughs> how is that harassment they're putting a link to perverted justice's website and then that person can do their own investigating and then go into perverted justice website and then get the chat log to have a look at the chat log what lauren wrote how on earth is that harassment Jesus, that's a cracker that one, isn't it? Intentional disclosure, what time are we on here? Oh right, okay. Um, The ignorance of any such persons that will put portions of... Plaintiff states for intentional disclosure of private facts. The ignorance, ignorance, that's a big word, of any such persons that will put portions of an individual's criminal discovery... An individual's criminal discovery on national worldwide television and internet website before the suspect has ever been convicted of a crime astounds me. Do you know what? I do understand what he's getting at. Let's just say, like, he's not innocent. He knows he's not innocent, which makes this all ridiculous. But let's just say that he'd, like I've said in the earlier videos, that he'd been stitched up by somebody and it had already gone out on tv i do get that do you get what i mean if someone but it's like i've said it's kind of a silly argument because let's just say that someone had been stitched up right and they had been led down a path none of this would have happened in other words nbc wouldn't have broadcast it because it would have been quite obvious that they would have been stitched up if it's like John Pierre Weary tried to say that he'd been led down that path, but it was quite clear it was bullshit. He just made up fake names and Mexicans on buzzes and John Pedersen. He just came out with a load of bullshit that was quite clearly nonsense. And then you found out he had previous. So he, he, he was unraveled by his nonsense. So, in other words, if. If it got to the point where an innocent person was involved, there wouldn't there'd be no chat log to put up there, would there? And so it doesn't really apply. And it's like I I understand his train of thought on this. He's saying, "How dare you expose me on national television before it even went to court?" But he pled guilty, and he is guilty. So it's kind of arrogant of him to make this argument. What's even more disgusting was that the the authorities condoned this behaviour by assisting the media in obtaining the confidential... What's confidential? What confidential information? What? What's even more disgusting? Well... Th- he's done it again. He's go- it's, go- it's written from the third person into the first person so astounds me and then it's like someone else has wrote it then he's talking from himself what's even more disgusting what the authorities can know this behavior by assisting the media authorities th- so the authorities assisted the media by i don't 
that doesn't make any sense to me. How is an individual ever to get a fair trial when such despicable behaviour takes place by the people you turn to for protection? So, <laughs> fucking hell. So, he's been, basically, he's been, it's a conspiracy. He's been stitched up by everybody. NBC, Perverted Justice, the government, the police. Every single person that's had a hand in this is corrupt. Um... When such despicable behaviour takes place by the people you turn to for protection. How is an individual ever to get a fair trial? Uh, I mean, I suppose one could argue that there is a point to that. There is I, there is a little bit of logic in what he's saying here. Um, let's just say, for argument's sake again, that an innocent person was caught up in this, who was on TV, that the jury had already seen... But if it ever went to that kind of a trial where there was a jury, I'm pretty sure his defence team would say, excuse me, have any of you members of the jury seen to catch a predator? And I'm pretty sure the judge would say, well, actually, uh, no, we'll get new jury members. And we'll get jury members who hasn't seen that show. It wouldn't be difficult to do. But that's if it ever went to trial. And it didn't go to trial because he pled guilty, which makes, his, which makes it all ridiculous. The media was allowed to gather confidential information that was written within the criminal discovery package of the suspects. I don't get what he's saying here. I know there was some kind of discovery package that he... I, I don't understand that term, discovery, criminal discovery package. Is it basically her way of him... He's legally obliged to get everything, every part of information that led to his arrest and evidence. He's allowed to see that. Um, once that information was obtained by the media, they then used specific portions of that discovery to intentionally make the suspect look guilty in the public eye by placing those specific portions of the suspect's discovery on their television show and on the internet for the whole world to see. This amendment does not guarantee the press constitutional right of special access to information not available on the, to the general public. The amendment does not guarantee journalists or any other citizen freedom to collect information immune from good faith criminal investigation by means it just is just fucking waffle. It, it's like frustrating to read sometimes. It's comical. But obviously human arrogance is one of the most difficult things to sort of to deal with and not get frustrated because human arrogance is, is basically you know, it's a stain on the earth, isn't it? This to a very minor degree. Um, and it, you know, arrogance is just, you know, arrogance diminishes wisdom. Um, and <laughs> fuck me, if, if it was ever, and if, if that statement was ever, ever, ever any, you know, was ever more evident, it's here. Um, it's just frustrating that he just comes out with this. It's like, well, it's the chat log that you used confidential who's it confident <laughs> who's, who's it who's it confidential to you and kayla do you know what i mean it's it basically that's the evidence that's the body of evidence the main body of evidence is the chat log him turning up at the address with condoms and bracelet wouldn't mean anything really without that chat log and what because then we know we've had it what his intentions were what he planned to do Everything, you know, he's already committed offences and he's committing further by showing up. If, let's just say that chat log didn't exist and he's a relative who went there to, um, you know, went there to say hello and the condoms were for somebody else. It was nothing to do with her and that's why they're in the truck. Then it would be a totally different story. But So in other words, it'd be very difficult to prove, but that chat log is fundamental to the case of evidence, to the, that's why he pled guilty because that chat log was there. He came out with a statement at, when he pled guilty, going, "I want to apologise to the court and to the rest of the world about my behaviour. It is not like me to do this." So he's gone from that, feeling sorry for himself and grovelling to the court, to this. The right to speak and publish. Yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. The most frequent expression of that view has been made in cases. De Just shut up, you prat. You going on about? Yet, while public 
This was nothing more than a cruel act by the media and the authorities to assist in cementing a conviction on the suspect. <laughs> it's just fascinating, isn't it? it? Like it's like they've t- it's it's like they've completely stitched up an innocent man. It's like Stephen Avery's wrote this. Do you know what I mean? It's absolutely crazy. Intentional intrusion of right to be left alone. I was going to quit, but this should be funny. Um, Intentional intrusion on right to be left alone. Right to be left alone sounds like a bit of a crazy... Plaintiff states claim for intentional intrusion on right to be left alone. We have the human rights... the, the, The human rights act... The human rights in Europe has a right to privacy, so it's obviously a similar thing. It just sounds right to be left alone. just sounds a bit childlike. One suspect had told the decoy no when asked about meeting in person, which never fucking occurred. Can we just be clear on that? As I'm sure you all know, that never happened. One suspect had told the decoy no when. It, I don't, he never said that when asking about but the suspect should have been left alone. Well, even if that's happened, even if he did say no, which he never did, why should they have left him alone? If if he's a danger and says, no, please, then so be it. The associates of NBC only continue to... The associates of NBC, I think he means perverted justice, the associates of NBC, but, but what's this got to do with NBC? This is it's perverted justice. See, this is the thing in, law, in his head. They're all one entity. They're all in league with each other to get him stitched up. It's like a conspiracy theory. And I've found that the ones that believe, that take conspiracy theories so serious, generally are the ones that are the most fucking stupid. Well, not stupid, but, you know, because there are some conspiracies out there but that, that I believe, but don't take it like, you know, don't let it bother you so much. But he, he genuinely believes that there's a... Ma- that it's his arrogance as well and his, 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 his sort of delusions of grandeur and self-importance. He thinks that they're all out to stitch him up because he's like he's the most important person in the world. The NBC only continued to harass a suspect for the purpose of greed for ratings on the television series to get another vid- individual on their television se- series. Okay, well that's not true because perverted justice. You can say that the goals weren't exactly 100% honourable, and I'm sure they weren't, but at the end of the day, you just wanted to get perverts locked up. That was it. You know, and I believe that people were involved in perverted justice have been victim of certain sexual abuse before. Suspect had explained to the decoy that they could not meet until decoy was 18 years of age, but that was not good enough for them. Well, as I'm sure I don't need to say, that never fucking happened either. Their new suspect was very vulnerable, very not ve- not just vulnerable, very vulnerable at the time, and they wanted to cash in on his vulnerability. <laughs> it just this is just it just defies belief, doesn't it? It defies belief. They wanted to cash in on his vulnerability. He's the he's the vulnerable one that's been exploited by these evil people. You just can't fucking see it. Perverted Justice was being paid by NBC to law in individuals for the sole purpose of making a television show and that financial... From the NBC's perspective, their goal is ratings. There will be some people, even Chris Hansen, he's a, he's a journalist, but you could see it. There was a part of him that wanted to try to find out what these people were doing there. He gave them all a chance. It wasn't 100% evil, oppressive... In, you know, um, motivations. There were some some honourable motivations behind it. Help to push the decoys to press individuals in any way they possibly could to go to the stingos to meet the underage girl or in some cases boy. Greed is a powerful word and has no bones. Obviously, with perverted, you oh my, it's just, it's just crazy. Is it? it's uh, it. It's staggering. I can't go right. We've done enough. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Just let me know of what you think of it. It's um, 
it's just, what can you say? It's just pretty. It's pretty staggering, isn't it? But um, it, this one hasn't been quite as funny as the other ones. It's just because some of it is amusing, and some of it you find frustrating at his arrogance. You know what I mean? This has been one of those cases where it's kind of been more frustrating, but it's still interesting to go through. Um, that you know somebody in that position can write this. It's 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 just remarkable. It really is. Anyway, let me know what you think, guys, and I'll speak to you later.